Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks, where today we're going to answer that burning question you have. Which one should you buy? The Finau Q1 Pro or the unnamed company M9? They're both Android 6.0 watches. They both claim 4G cellular connectivity and they're really getting it in Europe, parts of Europe, Australia we understand, of course China, but in the United States and other countries there's no 4G or 3G connectivity with either of these watches. So what sets them apart? Well look at the bands first of all. You've got a colorful multi-hole breathable TPU band on the Q1 Pro and on the M9 you've got your standard really smooth TPU band. They're both nice bands. They're both the same overall length it looks like. Guess the M9 is a little bit shorter, but a little bit longer on the clasp. Not much difference there. What else? Well, there's a lot. Let's turn them on to get them started. Side button over here. Oh, they're already on. Lucky me. Oh, okay. We don't have to waste your time. We can go right to the charger. The M9 uses your standard four pin magnetic coupler but wait a minute it's not standard somehow this one's specialized because i've used three other ones that are just like this and they don't work not for data connection check it out it's magnetic but it has to fit within that little groove area in order for connections to work very picky and not all that strong Mm hmm okay well that's probably a downside but not as down in my opinion as what the q1 pro does they decided to eliminate the magnets inside the back and go with this alligator clip that has to fit exactly right in order to charge and it actually clamps onto the glass screen huh which one's better for charging? Neither. Neither. They both are lousy. We need your standard four pin. None of this kind of recess. And that's a good place to hold water in the bottom of there, in my opinion. Speaking of water, let's talk about waterproof. Mm hmm. These are both supposed to be IP67 or higher rated water resistance, meaning you should be able to swim with them, bathe with them, anything but. Hot water, you don't want to put them in hot water, and uh, you don't want to, um, yeah, you don't want to move around too much in the water. It's a static test, and you don't want to push the button underwater. With that said, the, uh, the build quality is really good on both of them. Wow, I keep pushing the buttons, and weird things happen. Look at this. On this one, you got a nice seal. Now, these are the speaker ports, and you can literally see down inside of them. And I was playing with it. You can actually blow across here and get a bit of a whistle if you get it just right. I don't know. Is that sealed in behind? One of the tech folks took the back off and said, no, it's not sealed back there. But another tech folks said he's been swimming with it five times and no water problems at all. Microphone port. Um... Yeah, we're going to do a water test eventually on the assumption that it's not going to survive. So I want to get all these comparison videos and things done before I risk totally destroying it. The SIM card slots, the biggest thing. Check it out. This one is really sealed well. There's a screw in here. When you take it out, there's an inside... Well, heck, let's do it. Takes a standard Phillips screwdriver to unscrew it. And... It's in here really good, so you have to lift up on it. This is where fingernails come in handy. There. Wow. Yeah. Now, check this out. Look, we've got this pressure pad here with a rubber grommet that goes all the way around it that presses down inside the chamber that holds the SIM card. See that? And then that is held in tightly with a screw. No water is going to get in there. The Q1 Pro now, on the other hand, 
it just has a little uh, cover that snaps in. You could easily take your finger, pop it out. Now it's got a bit of a silicone grommet itself. You actually push the SIM card in here. It, we saw that in the video and it'll hold it in place. And then that grommet with the SIM card seals likewise inside that inner area. Uh-huh. But the only thing holding it in is that little tab there and there that you have to line up just right to snap this back in place. And you don't want to bend them or break them because if you do, you probably lose your waterproof capability. I never can get this right. I'm going to do it off camera and put it back. Oh, there's that one too over there. Yeah, yeah. You have the little corner that has to line up. Wow, I've got it backwards. With that little corner, that's part of the problem. Okay, that goes under. That goes in. There. You hear it snap? Now look at that. Look at that. Look at that. My guess is water is going to get under there. It's just a matter of whether or not that seal is going to keep it from actually going further into the watch itself. Those are the speaker ports. Mm. Now here, those are the speaker ports there. And we have no idea, you know, would water go all the way in or not? If they're claiming waterproof, then it should be sealed. Microphone port, everything. That's the one that's got me a little bit worried. So, but as far as waterproofness goes, I would say the M9 is a safer bet than the Q1 Pro. But there's more. Now, neither of them have the ability to take custom watch faces. So what you got is what you've got. And the Q1 Pro has a whole bunch of stock watch faces. Look at all those varieties. Square ones, round ones. They go on and 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 on. I haven't even gotten to the end. However, on the M9, you have four. There's no other ones. That's it. Come back here. That's another problem we'll talk about. You have four. One, two, three, four. We showed them to you before. That's all you have in terms of watch faces for the M9. So as bad as it is that you don't have custom watch faces available to you on either of them, the Q1 Pro, you've got a nice portfolio of optional watch faces to use. Okay, so Q1, better on watch faces. M9, possibly better on waterproofing. The bands, your choice. They both seem pretty good. The size, the thickness, they both look really about the same, don't they? Overall the same. They're the same 240 by 240 square watch face. Let's get this on something rectangular, easier to see all of that. Now, what comes into play next are the buttons. You have the one side button. Darn, there's a lot of these. There, I'll go back to the first one. There's a lot of, of uh, watch faces. There's, there's only one side button on both watches. The speakers are on this side, but the bottom is different. Here, you have one single button. Here, you actually have three. You have a central one and one over here and one over here. That's going to come into play in a little bit. You're going to see that. Highly beneficial to have the three buttons. The outer one on this one, when you press, this is where any recent apps you've opened are, and you can switch between them. It's the same thing as what happens when you press clear over here. See, it looks like that, and you can cancel out all of these things. So the last button here is the same as the clear button here. That takes you back to the opening screen. This one, the middle one, takes you back here. Here's your app drawer with all of your apps. There we go. And when you sit the center button, it takes you to your watch face. Here it just takes you, no matter where you are, back to page one of your apps. If you want to see your watch face, you have to turn it off and turn it on. No other way. This one, as you see, automatically takes you right back to there. So a lot of more functionality in the Q1 Pro with the buttons that you've got available to you. And then I want to take you into an app 
and just uh, test out the speakers and some other stuff. We're going to go into all apps. We're going to go down here to Ground Effect Pro. Okay, this is a good little game thing. And we'll do this one first. You hear the sound happening. And some music in here. Not terribly loud. I'm pretty sure it's up all the way. I'm just going to cruise with this. We'll let it get started. And uh, pick one. I don't know if you guys have seen this one, but it's a skill game where you tilt it slightly to fly it. See, and you have that capability with this to turn it and play it. And you've got the audio, and it works well, and it works smooth. Okay, we're done. Let's get out of here. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, that paused it. Well, where's my back button? Uh, start, pause. Oh, I guess I got to turn it off. Okay, let's come back on. Oh, wait a minute. We're in the game. Uh, wait a minute. How do I get out of here? I don't. That's something when you're missing an extra button, that's a really big problem. You know how you get out of here? You have to turn the watch off. The M9, folks, the M9. Let's see what happens on the Q1 Pro when we do that. We're gonna find a game. It should be in more. I'm sorry, I'm off the screen here, huh? And we go into ground effects and we'll load this one up. Somehow this seems sharper to me too. I don't know, maybe it's my eyes. Okay, whoa. Just cruise. Uh, maybe later, I don't want to review it now. Just cruise. Okay, pick a... There, now we're ready to go. You hear the sound coming out of this one? Much more fine control. <laughs> it's the player, not the watch. <laughs> Much smoother overall control on this one. You see that? Now let's press that center button. Took us right back to home. Here we are again here. Press the button. Well, not, not doing anything. Oh, I guess we have to press it to start. Ah, well, anyway, you get the picture. There's no way out of here. I cannot bail out of the game. I have to literally press and hold and turn the watch off. So that's a few things about the uh, M9 and the Q1 Pro that may help you a bit in your decision-making process. Heart rate monitor is a little bit recessed or, or pressed out on here on the... Uh, Q1 Pro to get better contact without any extra light coming in on your arm as opposed to flat here. Um, yeah. So I know, I know you all are waiting for this. The quintessential dunking, right? Where we're going to test the waterproof capability of both watches. And we will do that. Just not today. I'm going under the assumption that I'm going to break both watches when I do that. And I certainly uh, don't want to do that before we have finished all of the comparisons and testing that we want to do. But what we do want to do is show you the removability of the bands. It should be as simple as coming in here. Whoa, there they go. And popping them out. Okay. There's our Q1 Pro, totally removable bands. Got to prove it, you know. Here's our M9. We do the same thing here. And they're removable as well. And I wouldn't doubt if they're interchangeable too. So who knows, I might put them back differently. Well, little tight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. M9 Q1 Pro. Front-facing cameras on both of them. I wonder which one's heavier. 
Let me get the scale. Here we go. Okay, set it down, turn it on. Let it zero out the Q1 Pro without the bands. 38.2, can you see that? 38.2 grams. The M9, 46.1. Wow, I thought it felt heavier. But it's more ruggedized, more waterproof. Not more, well, yeah, more waterproof, more ruggedized. Uh, yeah, much more sporty. This is more dressy, more sporty. And if you swap the bands around, put this on here and this on here, now you got a really sporty look. <laughs> you know, it'd be like if you could rub them together and get the best of both into one, you'd have a really nice uh, overall watch. But this is what we've got. So finally, I want to leave you on a happy note. The button's on the left-hand side, and all your stuff is over here, and it makes it awkward. It's like you have to wear it on your right arm if you want a button towards your hand. Well, what if I could show you how you can switch this so the button is on the right? That's right, right here on the right. It's really easy to do. Actually, it comes from a thread from Jan Newman, who was posting to Pablo 11 about Joe BSO 12's suggestion on a way to fix this whole thing using the app setting search that would let you go into display and choose this thing called rotate the contents of the screen. Well, yes, <laughs> that's true. You could use setting search to do that, but it turns out you can actually get into it from the settings directly. Now here we are in the uh, M9 with it the wrong way, okay? And what I'm gonna do is come down here to display, which you could get to from setting search or right here in settings, go all the way down to when device is rotated. And it says rotate the contents. When you do this and you back out of here and watch, if I twist the watch a quarter of a turn in any direction, it's going to switch so that it's always upright. So that's nice, but it's kind of awkward. It would be flying all over the place, right? So what you need to do is make sure you have the button on the right-hand side where you want it to be. Go back into settings. Go back into display. Go back into the thing about rotating it. And now stay in the current orientation. I tell you. These little capacitive screens are difficult to navigate. And now we're back, and then I have to go off and on. There. And now it's not going to rotate anymore, right? Excellent. Okay. But we do want to get into the camera. And the camera is right side up. All right. Even though it's at the bottom of the screen. So it doesn't mess around. Well, that kind of makes sense. Your image is going <laughs> to... <laughs> Hello, gravity, you know, uh, it's always going to be right. Uh, it's just that now your button is up at the top. Okay, wow, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks, and I have totally taken up too much of your time. Uh, there, good. Okay, but now you know the differences between the Q1 Pro and the M9 and how to rotate the buttons to have them on the right-hand side if you like your watch that way, which most people do, and where they're available. Check the show uh, notes down below. I'll have a buying link for both of them, whichever you choose. Uh, picking it up from one of our sponsors helps us out and helps them out and helps you out because we'll get more watches to review. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Thanks for your subscription and your presence and your patience. We'll see you again soon. Oh, one more thing I wanted to cover. I talked about using display brightness for changing brightness, but if you don't install that, how do you change the brightness on these watches? On the Final Q1 Pro, count the steps. One, I slide down. Two, I press the lightning bolt. Three, I go here. And four, I actually slide the slider. And then one more and up to get back to where I was. Quite a bit but nothing compared to the M9. Watch this. From here, if I slide down, well, I touch the capacitive button if I've turned it around because I want the button on the right instead of the left. Otherwise, it would be the camera, and you could slide down. But because I've done that, 
and that button is active across the top here it makes it a problem and touching it doesn't get me back to the watch face so I got to press the button and come back and start over now let's pretend that I knew that and I slide down from the side <clears throat> I said I slide down from the side darn um okay there there yeah if you get it right on the edge you get down here and you find that well you can't no volume and airplane mode you can't do it through notifications so let's start over all right here's the steps one two three four five six seven seven steps to change the brightness on this one then i can hit back 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 off and on to get back to the watch face don't you just want it uh. <laughs> there we've covered brightness now we're done